Have you ever wondered how you actually set up the Ray Dalio All Weather Portfolio Approach? Well, look no further. Today's video is all about step by step exactly how you set it up. We'll be going through it together using a particular funding platform online. So by the end of the video, you'll know exactly how to do it. So without further ado, let's jump in. Hey guys, my name is James Corsier and welcome to the Money Paradox podcast. Yes, we're going through this video of exactly how to set up the Ray Dalio portfolio approach. We're going to do it together using a funding platform. So it is going to be as simple as I possibly can make it. Now I'm going to make four assumptions on this video. Number one, you've picked an investment approach. Now the Ray Dalio all weather portfolio is an investment approach, but it's not the only one out there. And that is a decision you need to make yourself. Secondly, how much you want to be investing and how often? Is it a lump sum up front? Are you going to be investing a specific amount each money from your paycheck, for example? That is a decision you need to make. Thirdly, which platform you're going to use? Today, we're going to be going through Interactive Investor, but the principles we're going to be going through apply to any investment platform. Fourthly, you want to be setting up your investment platform because sometimes it's not always instant. It might take a little while to set up for them to process it. So you won't be able to go straight in to investing from registering. Now, guys, if you haven't done any of those four steps, not to worry, you'll still get huge amounts of value from this video. But if you haven't done them, check out the show notes for videos where I go through each of these areas separately. All right, let's jump in. Let's get through it. All right. So firstly, we want to navigate to the specific investment platform we're going to use. Today, we're using Interactive Investor. So all we have to do is just type II into search. Top link is going to be Interactive Investor. So we click on that. And here we are. Top right, log in. And you're going to log in with the details you set up separately. If you haven't done this already, all you need to do, go away, register an account, and then you'll be able to kind of follow along with me. Again, I've got a video separately on that, but uh, this is carrying on from actually logging in. All right, so we're going to log in. So I'm going to put in my username. You want to put in yours. Don't use mine <laughs> unless you want to spend my money. All right, great. We're in the platform. All right, cool. So the first thing to think about is, are we going to be investing up front or are we going to be setting up a regular investment up here? Trading, we click on that. And these top two links, the top one is if you want to be investing a specific amount up front. The second one is regularly investing each month a specific amount. Now I'm going to go through the second option first because number one, it's more restrictive on Interactive Investor than most platforms in terms of what you can invest in. Okay, so we'll be able to see more of the things you need to navigate around. And two, this is easier, right guys? We want to be setting up an approach where we can do it and then we don't need to worry about it. It just does it automatically each month, right? Trading now means you have to go in and manually do it each time. Okay, so we're going to click that second link. All right, and I'm going to remove all of these first because this was me getting ready for today's session. All right, we'll start from scratch so you see what I see. All right. Okay, firstly, we want to set up shares. So that's the first thing on the Ray Dalio approach. You know, let's recap. There are five things we want to be investing in. Shares, long-term bonds, medium-term bonds, gold, and commodities. Okay, so the main thing we'll be looking to do today is to understand how we find each of those items within a platform. Yeah. So we go add investments 
and then we search for something. Now there are two ways we can search, through equities or through funds. Now a fund is where a particular company sets up a fund that resembles what we want, like stocks, like the stock market. And let's say that was Vanguard, for example, a very famous uh, company that sets up funds. Well, this funding platform, Interactive Investor, can go and speak with Vanguard and say, right, James wants to invest £100 with you. Here's £100 of his money. Please put it in that fund. That's how they effectively do that. If you do it through equities, though, for what we're doing, so funds like the Ray Dalio approach, then what you're effectively doing is investing in that fund, but through something that is listed on the stock market. Stock market. And so the way it's done is through an ETF. ETF means exchange traded fund. So effectively it means it's a fund traded on an exchange, like the London Stock Exchange. Okay, that's it. So the main thing we want to be navigating, right, the main predicament in all of this is trying to find a fund that matches what you want, okay? And doing it, certainly outside of the US, but anywhere really, doing, setting up the Ray Dalio approach, the main hurdle is finding funds that are relevant to what you want to invest in, okay? Because some of these are not that common and so aren't listed on all the funding platforms and aren't, don't have a full nice suite of offerings. Now in the US it seems to be a lot more comprehensive so that's probably why uh, people don't tend to find as much of an issue in the US but it's certainly in the UK and elsewhere certainly in Europe it's a much more limited list especially because this has been driven from a US minded person creating a kind of a US uh, biased fund so to speak okay so first on the list stock market so Ray Dalio recommends 30% of the portfolio to be invested in the stock market well what's that the stock market could be anything right okay well what he gen what he basically means is the stock market as a whole and there's different ways we can do that you can invest in the US stock market, so like something like the S&P 500, which is the top 500 listed companies in the US. Or you could invest in one that's based in the UK, like the FTSE 100, the top 100 listed companies in the UK. Or you could do something that invests in the whole world, the developed market, the developing world. There's many different options. Okay, now I live in the UK, and so I would prefer to invest in the whole world because for me that feels more diversified and doesn't feel as US centric. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter as long as you're happy with the choice and it is a big stock market fund that's diversified beyond just specific companies. So the way you wanna be looking for this is you wanna be looking for something like uh, so, for example, if you did all world, so you're looking for the whole world, okay? Here we can see Vanguard, Funds, PLC, FTSE, all world, UCITS, ETF, GB. We can explain a little bit more on that. And there's another one, Invesco Markets, uh, FTSE, RAFI, all world. So both of these are probably going to be investing in the all world FTSE indicator. So this is an index, FTSE All World is a specific index that was set up by FTSE, the Financial Times Stock Exchange. And it is a, an index that is set up to look to monitor the value of the total world stock market. And an index is simply someone putting a basket of things together, like a basket of goods together, and being able to check those on an ongoing basis. So they'll put some from the US listed in Europe, Japan, China, all over, and they'll put them all together. And they tend to weight them based on the value of those areas. So I'm gonna pick the Vanguard one, because Vanguard is a very well-known name, generally regarded to be very low costs, very reputable. So that would be the one that I'd be looking to choose here, personally. 
So it's the price of that particular fund. And there's some different documents you can view. And these documents you can view to get a bit more information about what you've picked to make sure it's what you actually want. So the KIID document is the key investor information document. So that's like a summary, right? The prospectus document, that's like the really detailed information behind this fund. And then the cost disclosure document is a summary of the costs involved. So let's jump into the KID document first. So here it gives a nice summary. Okay. Vanguard FTSE All World. The fund employs a passive management, so that's great, or indexing. So what that means is it's not someone actively managing it, trying to pick fancy investments to, to do well. It's passive. It just follows a set of rules. And it does it through physical acquisition, so basically buying things, that seeks to track the performance of the FTSE All World Index. Okay, This is basically going out and buying things to try and replicate this. And you can research this if you want, but effectively it is an index that maps the stock market in its entirety across the whole world. All right. So for me, that's perfect. You don't have to pick this. You can pick a US-based one. Uh, so you could maybe uh, pick something like the S&P 500. You know, if you live somewhere else, you could pick one that's based in your economy. I like this because it is the most diversified. Okay, great. So that's exactly what I want. Cost disclosure document. Click on that. This tells me the fees I'm going to pay. Now, the great thing with Interactive Investor is that if you regularly invest in them, there is no cost for the trade. So here, our cost, so Interactive Investor costs zero, no cost. That's amazing, that's awesome, right? But then the product costs, so that's a cost to, in, to this particular fund, is 0.24%, that's what you have to pay. That's pretty low, right? That's a quarter of a percent that you'll pay to this particular fund for being able to have the privilege of investing in it. Now, that is actually a little bit higher than some other passive funds. And the reason is because it's quite complicated because it's the whole world. It's having to invest in lots of different companies to make that up. If it was something like just the S&P 500 or the FTSE 100, it'd probably be a little bit cheaper because there's less companies to invest in. But I'm happy with that. 0.24% is nice and cheap. So I'm going to choose that. Now, I'm going to be really simple with my numbers to make it easy for you guys. But you can change this depending on your own situation. So I'm going to assume we're investing £1,000 a month. Okay, And I'm doing that because it's a nice round number. Uh, so if I'm doing 30%, right, in the stock market, okay, I can put it up in this in the top line of Google Chrome, it does it for me, but you can use your own calculator. 30% times by a thousand, which is how much I've got to invest each month, which is 300 pounds. That's pretty obvious. So let's chuck that in, 300, okay? Nice and simple. Okay, put that in, continue. Okay, great, so it's saved my first choice, okay? And if you wanna save things as you go, you can just press save changes, and then it does it, okay? All right, if I wanna go back into it and set the next one up, boom, add investments. All right, so the next one on my list is long-term government bonds. So long-term government bonds, from Ray Dalio's point of view, are bonds with a term that are 15 years or more. The term just means the length of them. They need to be government bonds from a government that's extremely reliable. So if you're gonna if you're gonna lend money to that government, you want to be extremely sure that they are gonna pay you back. So you want to be doing it with a government that's very highly rated, the US, the UK, the European Central Bank are all really good choices but you can choose others if you feel they are also reliable. So how do we try and find one that's relevant? 
Well, the best way for this is to search it by the number of years. So 15 tends to be the lower limit. So you'll either find it as, like you see here, 15 to 30 years, that's quite common, okay? Or if you do 15 plus, you often get some coming that way, okay? Okay, so if I put in 15, you can see there's two options here. Now let me explain these. iShares is the name of the company that have created this fund, okay? GOV will be government. Okay. BD will be bonds, so government bonds. E is probably European government bonds, 15 to 30 years. Okay. ETF will be exchange rate fund, like I said. So it's a fund traded on exchange, listed. And that makes sense because we're searching in equities. And then GBP, which probably means it's denominated in pounds. So let's unpick this a bit. That's the name of the company. iShares is the is uh, a company set up by BlackRock, massive company. I think it's a, the biggest investment company globally in terms of value, very well uh, respected, reputable company, so fairly trustworthy. Okay, European bonds, so government bonds, that's what we were looking for, 15 to 30 years, perfect term length. Uh, so European, well, the reason why it's probably showing me European options is because I'm based in the UK. Now, investing in long-term bonds is quite uncommon. So if I was in the U US, I'd probably get more options that were US denominated, but because I'm in the UK, I'm either getting options that are UK based or European, right? If you're doing this in another country, then you may well get options that are relevant to that country. Okay, so I'm going to pick that one. All right, and then it shows me the price, £254. Okay, so the, the key thing with Interact Invest, and you'll find this with other platforms, is you cannot regularly invest, okay, an amount of money that is less than its bid price. Now that's because it won't let you buy less than one share. That's the cost of one share of this particular fund. Now that's a shame because that's quite a high amount of money. Because if I was to invest £254 and I was investing £1,000 a month, that'd be 25%. Okay? Which is quite high. Now for me, if I'm investing a thousand pounds, the Ray Dalio says 40% of it needs to be long term, which is 400 pounds. Now 400 pounds is less than 254 pounds. So, sorry, it's higher than 254. So I can put that in and it will be fine. It will be okay, okay? But if you're investing less each month, you're gonna run into a problem there. And I'm gonna explain how to deal with that on the next one. So watch this space. Okay, so I'm gonna put the 400 in there. But before I do, I'm just gonna quickly check a few of these documents just to check we're happy. Okay, so the cost disclosure, we always wanna make sure we're paying a good price. No fees for us because it's regular. Um, product cost 0.21%. Nice and low, and that's because it will be an index fund, passively managed. But we want to make sure by clicking on the KIID document here. Okay. iShares European Government Bond, 15 to 30 years. Okay. We can just check in here. Aims to achieve a return on your investment through a combination of capital growth and income on the fund's assets, which reflects the return on the Barclays Euro Government Bond 30 year term index. So it's following a European Government Bond index of 30 years. So we're all good. This is what we're looking for. It's the right term. It's European Government Bonds. So, at least from my perspective, it's very safe. So, I'm going to invest in that. But you could invest in a UK-based one, uh, a US-based one, something like that. 
maybe a, a fund that invests in many different countries all together that are from um, big developed economies that's also an option you just use okay so i'm going to click on that all right that's two two of mine brilliant let's move on to the third one okay the third one is our medium term government bonds so that's a time period of seven to ten years so again the best way to try and search this is through searching the time period it tends to be seven to ten so i'm going to search for that now there's two options here first one is iShares again like we talked about e government bonds e that's european government bonds like i said before seven to ten years etf eu so that's basically the same as what we chose before but it's a shorter time period so that would be the most relevant okay so that's like the equivalent but for sh like a, a medium term now i'm going to run into an issue here because you see the price of a share of this is 207 pounds and ray dalio tells me i need to invest 15 percent each month into medium term bonds and that is 150 pounds okay now 150 pounds is less than the minimum so what happens is if i press 150 in here okay it's going to it's going to allow me to do it but then when i go to save those changes it's going to come up with an error message and this error message is essentially saying it's not very clear but it's essentially saying you can't do this because it's lower than the the bid price so i'm going to have to go in and i'm going to have to start again i have to get rid of that and i can't choose that now two different ways to deal with this if you find something you want to invest in and the price is too high the different things you can do you can either increase how much you put in so it's a higher amount okay so instead of putting in 150 pounds a month you can put in 207 pounds so you're going to put in more money each month than you should so you're going to have a higher share in that all right and then over time the weighting of that this particular area is going to be higher than it should be so then when you go to rebalance every six months or a year what you'll probably need to do is you'll probably need to sell some of this and then buy other things well as part of the ray dalio approach every six to 12 months you rebalance anyway so that's fine you're going to do that anyway it's just you're probably going to have to sell a bit more of this than you would normally okay so that's one way to deal with it another way to deal with it is to not buy it okay here and then you can go and you can specifically invest in in something in trade now and you can find something else there that matches what you want with a lower bid price which will allow you to uh, buy the right amount or you can buy the same same thing but do it more infrequently in line with how much you actually want to invest in so there's different ways you can do it now i don't like to do trade now unless i really can help it because doing it on a regular basis is much simpler once it's set up i can just leave it and forget about it okay another way you can do it is you can find another option that allows you to regularly invest with a lower bid price so let's put in seven to ten years again and here you've got iShares again great seven to ten years bonds bd bonds brilliant awesome but here tsy that will be treasury bonds usd us dollar treasury bonds so that's effectively buying us government bonds rather than european government bonds now here you can see the price is a little bit lower now i've got to buy 150 pounds a month that's what i want to buy now this is cheaper it's closer it's still higher but it's closer so i'm going to do this one because it's it's close enough for me 
So I'm going to make sure the price is higher than this, 173, okay? And then I'm going to say continue, okay? But before I do that, just want to double check, you always want to double check, what are your fees? 0.06, really, really cheap, guys. That's super cheap. So that's, that's made me nice and happy. And then I'm going to look at the summary document. And just want to double check. What is it? iShares dollar treasury bonds. Okay. Reflects return of the US Treasury 7 to 10 year bond index, benchmark index. Great. So that's exactly what I want. Brilliant. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So here I've got some medium term US dollar denominated uh, government bonds. And here I've got some European government long term bonds. Okay. Brilliant. Three down, two to go. Fourth one is gold. Okay. So here, really simple, you just search for gold. Okay. Now, a few different options here. iShares, like we said before, very famous, good one to go with. Okay. Here it says gold producers. Now, what that probably means is you're investing in gold related companies. So companies that are actually producing gold or linked to the production of gold. So if gold goes up in value, those companies are probably going to go up in value because they are going to get more money from the gold they produce. The trouble is though, it's indirect. So we don't want to be picking this if we can help it because Ray Dalio wants us to invest in gold itself or as closely linked to it. So this one here is probably a little bit more relevant. Physical metals, physical gold here. Okay. Did you mean one? Oh, Siri's uh, wanting to join the conversation. <laughs> so let's try this one, guys. Okay. Let's just check what it is on the summary document. Okay, let's jump in. I share physical gold. Okay, great. It's linked to physical gold. It's listed on the London Stock Exchange. That's why I can buy it. It provides an investment exposure to physical gold itself. It's value based on the London Bullion Market Association gold price. So that's perfect. It is directly connected to the gold price. That's great. Let's check the costs involved. Always want to be checking costs. No cost for us because it's regular and it's 0.25%. That's very low guys for something like this. There's only a quarter of a percent on charges to the fund. And this is the beauty guys of investing in index funds and passively passive funds is the charges are so, so low. You know, so very little money is going to eat and be eaten into by fees. Brilliant. So let me close a few of these windows down. Let's clean things up. All right, great. How much do I want to be investing in this? How much do we need? Well, Ray Dalio tells us 7.5% into gold, which is £75. Brilliant. We chuck in 75, which is higher than the bid price. That's pence, not pounds. Let's continue. Awesome. All right. Four down, one to go. Last one, commodities. Now, this one is a bit trickier. Now, the reason it's tricky is because not many people invest in commodities. So there's not many options out there. Okay. And one of the reasons why I use interactive investors, not, because, not just because it's cheap, and I think it is personally for, for what it offers, but also its breadth of what it offers is very good. It offers a lot more options than many of the other fund platforms, okay? Even within its regular investing section. So let's see if we can find something. So this is the thing, right? So I'm going to put in commodities, nothing. Sometimes you've got to do a bit of detective work. So commodities, uh, See, I'm putting in commodities, nothing's happening. I put in com, then weird things are coming up. I go into funds, I try here, commodities. 
Oh, okay, I found something here. Let's try that. Two options here. Commodity, commodities. Marlborough, commodity. Let's check that out. Okay. Let's check out what it is. Okay. Aim the fund is provide capital growth. Great. It's going to ex get exposure to at least 70% in commodities. Okay, so and then it lists a load of different commodities. Great, so it is commodity relinked. It fund will not invest directly in commodities, but will gain exposure by investing in a concentrated portfolio of exchange traded products. These may be funds or securities which gain exposure to commodities, either by holding directly or by using investments whose value is linked to the performance of a commodity or commodity index. So guys, this particular fund is actually actively managed. Look, the fund investing corners, which the investment manager has identified are demonstrating the strongest price, price growth trends. So this is actively managed. So as a result, the fees involved are probably going to be higher and you're relying on this particular person deciding what, what they're going to invest in for you. Which personally I don't like and I, and I believe the sentiment of Ray Dalio's or weather portfolio approach doesn't agree with that. It's very much index link. It's following a set of principles, just a strict list of commodities. This fund also invests in companies as well, not just the commodities itself, which are indirectly linked. So we don't like this one. We might choose it if this is all we got. Okay, so let's try something else. Sometimes you've got to get creative. So Com is bringing up commercial communications. We put two M's here, a lot of stuff that's not relevant. But here you can see multi units Luxembourg commodities, but without the O, okay, because we could have lost, we could have missed that quite easily. Okay, but that seems to be commodities related. So let's click on that one. Okay. And let's click on the KIID document which is the summary document and let's see what it says so this one is an index tracking passively managed fund brilliant that's what we want we want something that is just rule based keep the cost low investment objective of the fund is to track both the upward and downward evolution of the Thomson Reuters core commodity CRB total return. Okay, now that is a mouthful, but this is really important. This is exactly what we want to see. What it's doing is it's following an index. And that index is a specific basket of commodities that have been set independently to map to monitor the price of commodities as a whole. And because the investment objective is to track it, it's simply looking to follow that. The other one said its objective was to get capital growth, which sounds good, but what it basically means is it's allowed to do different things if it thinks it can make more money. Now the trouble with that is it makes it more expensive. So let's check the costs. Costs are lovely and low, 0.37%. That might sound high relative to the others, but for a commodities fund, that is very low, guys. That's lovely. We can pick that one. It's brilliant. Also, the bid price is low, even though it's this is pence. Okay, so in pounds, it's, I think, 10 pounds. So we can put in... 75 pounds because it's 7.5 percent in commodities and 7.5 percent of a thousand pounds is 75 pounds so we click that okay i want to go back to the other one for you just quickly just to show you how prices can change so we looked at this marlborough one let's look at the costs look at that 1.48 percent guys that is more than four times the price in fees. Now, you might think, well, whatever, 1.5%, who cares? But trust me, guys, 1.5% compounded over the time of your investment uh, life 
is huge. So we want to be keeping those fees as low as possible. Plus, you know, you want it to follow an actual index. You don't want it to be reliant on some person's uh, decisions. If you're picking this particular approach, okay, the Ray Dalio approach. So we're getting out of that. Brilliant. So we've got our five options, okay? Now here, the total is a thousand pounds and twenty-three. Okay, a thousand and twenty-three pounds, guys. Now the reason why it's a little bit higher is because the only option I could find, the cheapest option for, for a medium term bond that mapped our requirement of 150 pounds was 173. So I've had to put in 23 pounds more each month than I was planning to, but that's okay because it's nice and close, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so there we have it. That's the share, that's the, sorry, that's the, uh, the stock market, all world stock market. That is our long term government bonds. In this example, it's European uh, government bonds. Our medium term bonds are US Treasury bonds. We've got physical gold uh, by iShares. And then we've got our commodities index fund as well. Brilliant. So, what we do is, and we've got a summary of all of the key information, the more detailed information here and then the fee structures here so we can check that out whatever you want and we press save and there we have it guys <laughs> sorry guys it's come up with an error i won't worry about that um, if that happens you can just go back in and restart okay so here it's come back with the with the two you can just add those back in um, so what do we need we need the seven to ten Treasury, we put 173. We're going to put in gold. We're going to put 75 pounds in, aren't we, going to guys? And then we're going to put in the commodities. At 75. Don't worry guys, if you come up with an error message, that's okay, you just go back and do it again. All right, it's not the end of the world. And there we go, it's saved, all right. I know some of this seems complicated, there's a few things to monitor, but really guys, it's about just pushing through and getting to a position that you're happy with, okay? So let's recap before I go on. When you're searching for stuff, okay, you want to be trying different things. So sometimes I had to do com with two M's to try and find that commodities one. Yeah. With bonds, you know, you can search for bonds, but that didn't come up with anything. Or you could do government. You know, that didn't come up with anything, but gov did. See, government. Or bond, BND for bonds. Yeah. So you can be experimental when you try things. Okay. Don't worry. Just keep searching for something until you find something that's relevant. Now, that's our regular setup. So each month, it's going to invest that for me, £1,023 each month. Separate to that, I might want to invest some money up front in one go. Maybe I have £10,000 saved already, and I want to put it into Interactive Investor, and I want to, uh, I want to invest it to, to get the ball rolling, right? What I can do is I can go in to trade now, okay, and then I can actually find something specific. So do you remember we found the seven to 10 year one, right? Uh, the medium term bonds, and it was a bit high for us. Now it was high for me, and I'm investing a thousand pounds a month. Now you guys might be thinking, well, geez, James, that's a lot. You know, I only want to be investing, say, 500 a month or 300 a month, yeah? What do I do? Well, there's different ways you can do it. What you can do is you can try and find another fund that will uh, offer a lower bid price. Okay, so let's try search for seven to ten year bonds again. Okay, there's loads of different ones here. Okay, so some of these we've already looked at. Okay, um, but let's see. Let's click on this top one for example. Okay, four. 1,600 pence, that's 46 pounds. I believe that's 
OK, I believe we can pick that one. So we could do this perhaps. Let's try that. Let's say we wanted to invest in, say, £100. OK. Let's see if we can buy. So you put in, you search for it, right? Let just be clear again, guys. Sorry. So seven to ten years. I've looked through. I found one I thought might be OK. OK. Well, Invesco, let's pick something that's more familiar, guys, just to, to help you out. iShares PLC USD. Click on that one. There we go. You see, that one is really high. That's the one we picked last time, £172. So why don't we try something uh, else? OK, so that one was too high. Let's try this top one. OK, in this example, 7 to 10 year bonds, treasury bonds, so US government bonds here looks like the price is £46 or 4,600 pence. It's automatically changed it to this, TRXS, that's the code of this particular listed fund. So don't worry about that guys, that's just a code. Then we want to buy, we click on buy, trade by cash amount and then you put in how much you want. So let's say it's £100 which is higher than £46. More trade options, limit orders. We can do off, I think. Yeah. So it just, I believe limit orders means that you limit the order based on the price. If it says off, it will just buy it for whatever the price was when it opens, um, when it's able to buy it. Here, do you remember the kid document? That is the summary document. So we can go and check that just to make sure we're buying what we're intending. Passively managed exchange traded fund tracks the total return of the Bloomberg Barclays US Treasury 7 to 10 year index. Brilliant. Okay, so that I'm happy with that. Look at the charge, 0.1%, very low. So I'm fine with that personally because it's from the US government bond and it's the right uh, term my period so I would just do preview order and then it's just saying give me a clarification of what I'm looking to buy it's saying the market is closed okay so right now the market isn't open so what it would do is it would I would place my order and then when the market opens the price at which it opens it will go and buy at that point so if the price drops, it will, you'll get it at a cheaper price. If it goes up, you'll get it at a more expensive price. But you, you're saying you're okay for them to buy it at whatever price it opens with. If you want more liability, you can do it when the market is open. Okay. Now, here it's saying the cost of the shares, £100. Estimated commission. Now, Interactive Investor charges £7.99 for every manual investment in a listed stock fund, an equity fund. So because this is listed on the stock market, you're going to pay £7.99. But the great thing with Interact Investor is the cost of Interact Investor is 9 99 per month. And with that, you get one free trade. So because I haven't done any trades this month and the regular investments don't count, I get it for free. So it's basically going to charge me nothing for this particular trade. Okay. So if I were to want to buy this, I'd just say place order and then it would do it. Okay. So with Interactive Investor in particular, okay, giving a summary why it's so powerful is you pay £10 a month, okay, which is a decent amount a month uh, of money. But with that, your regular investments okay, of this is all free. You're going to get that. It's going to do that every month, all five transactions every month for free. And then any individual transactions, one of those each month is going to be free. So if you want to do one particular trade to rebalance or because one of these uh, is too expensive for you and you want to find something else that is at a cheaper price, or you want to do it more infrequently, you can use the manual trades. So guys, I hope you found that helpful. 
in summary, what we've done is we have gone in to a fund platform, Interactive Investor in particular. We've set up regular investing in the five key areas, stock market, long-term bonds, medium-term bonds, gold and commodities in the right percentage splits for the Ray Dalio or Weather Portfolio approach. We've talked about how you find something relevant, some of the stumbling blocks along the way, like the minimum bid price and how that can impact how much you can pay each month and how you can deal with that by, for example, doing manual trades and how you can use this for um, uh, one-off investments at the beginning with a set amount of savings. Okay, I'm going to do a separate video on rebalancing, but just very quickly, uh, all you need to do is every six months or a year, you review the value of your funds to understand how much you've got in them and how the share between each one is changed and whether you need to move money from one area to another to make sure the percentage splits are the same. Okay, And I'll link into the show notes a separate video that will go through that. And that's it guys, that's how you do it. I know this might in some ways seem a little bit complicated and yes it is, there's some things you need to navigate and get through but at its core it is very simple. Any questions, clarifications you want on this, let me know in the show notes. More than happy to help try and answer those and address those to make sure you can get it set up too. If you want me to do videos on specific areas of this to go into more detail, again, let me know. More than happy to do that. I hope you found this video as interesting as I've found doing it. I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.